In this video, we're going to be exploring and creating all types of Revit parameters. Let's go. Now, before we jump into Revit, I would just quickly like to ask you to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com. I'm going to link it up just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above. If you're serious about learning Revit, that's definitely the best place to be because that's where I host all of my Revit courses where I take the extra time to go slowly, step by step and explain all of the Revit topics in depth. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's now jump into Revit. Well, first into our presentation. So there are five different types of parameters in Revit. We have our system parameters, family parameters, project parameters, shared parameters, and finally global parameters. And we're going to be explaining and creating all of those. Now, before we jump into all of that, first, I want to explain the main difference between uh, instance and type parameters, because this is something that's going to be kind of mentioned multiple times throughout this video. So here I have this wall and we have hosted three doors to that wall. And uh, here I'm going to demonstrate the difference between instance and type parameters. If I select this one door, what you'll notice is that here we have some parameters on the uh, here in the properties panel. And if we go and open up the edit type uh, dialog, here you'll see some additional parameters. Uh, now it's easy uh, here when you see the name type properties, well, it's then easy to conclude that these are your type parameters. And that's where they're located. The instance parameters are the ones here when you select an element in the properties panel. So how do they work? What's the difference? Well, instance parameter only affects the instance of that family, so or of that family type. So here we have three doors, same family, same type. Uh, and we have three instances of this family. Now, if I select this one uh, door here, and then go to the properties and find the comment parameter, and I'm just going to type something and hit apply. What you'll notice is that this something is only going to appear here in this door. Even though this is the same family, same type here under comments, because this is a different instance, it's not going to show that comment, nor is it going to show it for this door. However, if I were to select the same door, go into edit type, and then here scroll down to identity data, and let's use description and type something else and hit apply and OK. What you'll notice now is no matter which door we select under type parameters or type properties, we're going to have that text under description. So this is going to affect all door uh, families of that type. So that's the main difference between these two. Now let's go back to our list and let's start exploring different parameter types and start with the system parameters. So system parameters are not something that you create. These are not user created parameters. They're system parameters. They're built into the software. You cannot change them. You cannot edit them. Uh, they're there. You cannot delete them. And uh, that's that's pretty much it. So here, if I select this door, what you'll notice is that here it has these, uh, this identity data, and usually it's going to be there. Phasing is usually going to be there for all of these. And those are the built in parameters. Same thing goes here for the wall, we can see that set of parameters. And you can see the same thing if you go into edit type. Uh, these parameters here under identity data, some of these are going to be everywhere, no matter which family you select, they are going to be uh, there and visible. So these are the system parameters, the built in parameters. Okay, now let's move on to the parameters, which we can actually create and use and edit and so on. So first, we are going to be talking about family parameters. These are kind of the simplest ones. So if I select the family and go into edit type, what they can do here is just go here to type family types, and I can create a new parameter by clicking on new parameter button, I can name it whatever I want. So let's call this test family parameter. We can make it a type or instance parameter. Let's leave it as type. The discipline will stay common. The type of proper parameter is going to be text. And then let's group it under other. OK, click apply and OK. And now let's load this back into the project and close it. Uh, I don't want to save the changes to the families. That's OK. And now if I select this door, what you'll notice here is under edit type, we have that 
test family parameter and it's going to be there under each one of these because it's well it's family wide however if i select the wall for example it's not going to be there obviously because it's a different category and we didn't edit that parameter in now these family parameters have a lot of limitations so for example you cannot really uh, schedule these parameters nor can you tag them Okay, so now let's move to an upper level of parameter, which is going to be our project parameter. So to create project parameters, you need to go here to your manage tab, then go to settings panel and open up project parameters. Here you can create one by clicking on the new parameter button. What you'll see is we have a few more settings here and let's first go to the name and let's call this one the test project parameter. In this case, I'm going to leave it as an instance parameter. The discipline can stay common. Uh, the type will be, let's go with the number for this one. And let's also group it under other. Now, in this case, because this is a project parameter, you can actually assign it to multiple categories. So it doesn't have to be only for doors or only for walls. It can be for as many as you like, or it can just be for one. In this case, uh, for demonstration purposes, let's assign this to both doors and walls. And then you can just uh, click OK. So now we have that test project parameter, click OK here, and if I select this door, what you'll see here uh, under uh, other, we have that test project parameter. If I select the wall, we also have that test project parameter. So it's going to be in these two categories as an instance parameter. However, if I were to go to architecture and component and place a furniture family like this one, well, it's not going to have that. It's not going to have that other uh, category, nor is it going to have that parameter because we didn't assign it to this category. Now, these parameters are a little less limiting the, than the family parameters uh, and they can be scheduled, however, they cannot be tagged. So this brings us to the question of why are some of these parameters limiting? Well, the reason for that is because of their scope. So the family parameter, its scope is really only inside of that family. The project parameter scope is inside of that project. So that's, that's why when we create a project parameter, we can schedule it because schedules are inside of projects, they're uh, kind of in the scope of the project, so we can use project parameters and we can schedule those. Uh, however, we cannot tag them because uh, tags are different families. They're created as a separate kind of independent instance, they're brought into the project and they can only recognize kind of the uh, system parameters that we have and they're not going to recognize the new customized project parameters which we have created. However, there is a way around this and that's the magical shared parameter. So let's talk about how these shared parameters are created because, well, they have a lot of power because they can bring things together. So let me show you. You go here to the manage tab and then you go to the settings panel yet again. You go here to shared parameters and then what you can do, do here is basically create a new shared parameter file. So shared parameter file is a text file which you can just keep on your computer or even better you can put it on a shared drive or server and then the whole company can use it. So in this case let's just go to create. I'm going to save it here on my desktop and I'm just going to call this test shared parameter file and you can see this is a .txt file so a simple windows text file okay now we need to create a new group or a new parameter group so you just go here to new and then you can name it in this case let's say that we want some parameters for walls so i'm just going to say walls and click ok and now we can place parameters here so you can just name it and you can call this one the test shared parameter I'm going to go and save the discipline as common and the type we can use text. Then I can click OK, OK again, and now we have that shared parameter file with those or that one shared parameter which we have created. Okay, so what now inside of the project? Well, inside of the project, uh, you can assign that shared parameter as a project parameter. So once you create it as a shared parameter, it's still not in the project. You have to go again to the settings panel to your project parameters, you create a new one, and then you go to shared parameters, 
and then you select a parameter and in this case that's our test shared parameter click OK and then click OK again oh we have to select the category so let's go here to walls because this is for walls click OK and then when we select that wall family uh, here you'll see this is grouped now under text uh, this is a test shared parameter so we have that shared parameter and what's really good about this is that you can now create a tag family and you can link it up with that shared parameter text file or shared uh, parameter text file yeah and then you can load this parameter there so now with shared parameters you can use them for both scheduling and tagging elements and that's why they're so powerful and finally global parameters allow us to drive dimensions and instance parameters from our global project parameters so this can be used for a variety of use cases and it does give you the power to kind of program the constraints inside of your building I'm just going to be showing you on a very simplified uh, example where here you can see we have this kind of hallway and we have added some dimensions and obviously they're not the same and let's say that you want to make this project smart where you want to control uh, the width of the hallway uh, with a parameter a global parameter which then you can change in case uh, you make a design change or perhaps the code changes and you have to resize that so what you can do is you can go here to global parameters uh, you can uh, create a new parameter and then let's call this one our test global parameter here you can see you can even create it as a reporting parameter for building some formulas in this case let's just leave it as is we're going to keep it as a at common uh, it's going to be a length uh, parameter uh, and then uh, it's going to be grouped under dimensions click OK and now we have that parameter and let's set the value to let's say 1500 millimeters now if I hit apply and OK I can select these three dimensions I can go here to label and set it to that test global parameter so it's going to set it to 1500 and then in case perhaps a code changes and it says okay now it has to be 1600 well I can always go to my global parameters set this to 1600 and then hit apply and as you can see all of these will change the in on the entire project now as I said this is oversimplified uh, on large projects you can really kind of use this and take advantage of this so you can make global changes easily from that one kind of control board here with the global parameters so I hope you have learned something new about parameters if you want to get access to my Revit project files you can find those on my patreon page which I'm going to be linking up just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above that's where I upload all of my Revit project files over 500 files so far and I'm adding new ones with each new tutorial Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content, uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos, and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.